You are listening to the New Book of Daniel podcast. Hello and welcome to the New Book of Daniel podcast. My name is Daniel Bobinski and I'll be your host today. I am um, sad to report that our editor-in-chief at UncoverDC.com, Ms. Tracy Beans, lost her house to a fire today. She's lost everything. Uh, everything seems to be okay with the family. Uh, I haven't, I've, uh, I'm awaiting a text. I just got news of this like 15 minutes before going to uh, record this. But uh, let's keep Tracy and her family in our prayers. And let's also hope that this uh, was an accident and not arson, which interestingly enough was a topic and already scheduled for this particular podcast. But do please keep uh, Tracy Beans and her family in your prayers. Uh, the country, as I have been predicting for months, is, is um, heading for a civil war. And again, I hope this is an accident and not an act of arson. I have had a house uh, catch fire before. It is not fun. Uh, when I was a child, uh, my father was a police officer in the Chicago area, and someone uh, did not like the fact that he wrote a ticket. And they came and they burned down our garage. We had a detached garage from the house. Someone came in the middle of the night, with a couple of his friends, and burned down our garage. Total destruction. Everything in the garage was gone. Uh, we were young children in the house at the time. Could have easily spread to the house. Uh, thankfully, we were, we were all okay. But I have been the victim of this kind of arson. Uh, I don't know if that's what happened to Tracy or not. Let's hope not. Let's hope it was an accident. And, and even that, it's just tragic that it happened. Other, other arson that has occurred is out in Portland, where you have the uh, left-wing group affiliated with Antifa, uh, the Pacific Northwest Youth Liberation Front, uh, tweeted out how cool it was that an officer's uh, house was, was a hit piece for arson, it burned a car and whatnot, and the county sheriff has already claimed that the incident was arson. Uh, this is very concerning. This could be the start of the kind of uh, pushback that the Democrats know are, that they're probably going to lose. I, in fact, I'm confident that they're going to lose, but I think they're starting to realize that Joe Biden will not be occupying the White House come January 20th. And I think they're starting to get a little bit ticked. What's even more uh, insulting is that after this Pacific Northwest Youth Liberation Front tweets out, this is so cool with regard to the article about the officer's house uh, being a victim of arson, Twitter says, it's fine. They're going to allow that tweet because it's too vague. And this is asinine. This is, this is the media and the social media encouraging violence, encouraging this kind of crap. And I don't think it should be allowed. I, I think we saw a testimony today on the Hill uh, before the Senate where these, these guys are gaslighting. They're lying to the Senate. They're lying to the American people. Jack Dorsey from Twitter, Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, lying and evading questions, not cooperating, not uh, committing to providing data that's being requested by the Senate committee. And the Senate committee says, fine, we'll have to just subpoena the information. But you could just say, yes, I'll provide it to you. You're being non-cooperative. I think we've got a lot, a lot to learn about civility in this country um, for those on the left. This is, violence is their MO. Violence is their MO. In fact, think about this for a second. We had hundreds of thousands of conservatives in Washington, D.C. for a peaceful demonstration in support of President Trump this past weekend. Hundreds of thousands of people, people of all sizes, shapes, and colors, all creeds, all religions, they're all in support of President Trump. Now, are they in support really of Trump? I don't think so. Yes, on the surface, it appears that way. But what I think that they're in support of is the freedom that President Trump advocates for Americans. That's what they want. President Trump just personifies it. Because the opposite side of the coin, Mr. Joe Biden, he's all about control, top-down control, communism, socialism, call it what you want. He's got the support of the Chinese Communist Party. 
We've got communists down in Georgia who are pushing for the Democrats to get elected. What does that tell you? If the communists are pushing for a candidate in Georgia, what does that tell you about the candidate? What does that tell you about Joe Biden, that he has the support of the Chinese? And what does it tell you that Joe Biden will not denounce the violence that broke out in Washington, D.C. on the evening of this protest, this rally, this, this conservative rally we had in D.C., all these patriots, no violence, nobody's burning or looting or causing any fights, singing songs of solidarity and patriotism and holding hands. It was no looting, no arson, no vandalism, and lo and behold, no press coverage either. And yet, when the evening rolls around, and the Antifa thugs come out, they start the violence. They're the ones beating people up. And then we, we go to Joe Biden and say, would you denounce this? I mean, hundreds of people saying, are you going to denounce this? Are you gonna say no more? No, silence, total silence from Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. They're not gonna denounce the violence because it's part of their religion. It's part of their doctrine. It's part of who they are. It's part of what the Marxist mentality is. You create violence. You intimidate. That is not what America is about. And I don't care if somebody's born on this soil. It doesn't make them a patriot. Just like anybody born in a garage doesn't make them a car. You want to be supportive of this country and be called a patriot, then you support and defend the Constitution of the United States. But these people who are wanting the Constitution tore up, they're Marxists. Marxist sympathizers at best. And if you think I'm sounding a little upset, it's because I am. I don't think we should have the Democrats throwing hissy fits and the media playing along with it, basically setting up the country for violence. The media is not being intellectually honest. They keep telling us that Joe Biden is the winner. Joe Biden is the winner. Guess what? If they looked at the law, Joe Biden is not the winner. And they keep vacillating back and forth between he's projected winner and then president-elect. He's not president-elect. You've got uh, Congress, Democrats in Congress, chastising the uh, government service agency for not uh, providing funds for transition to Joe Biden. Guess what? He's not the president-elect. He gets no funds. Thankfully, we've got Jody Heiss writing a letter and saying, hey, until Joe Biden is officially declared the president-elect, he gets no funds. He gets no pri private briefings. We are a country that is governed by the rule of law not because the AP declares somebody a winner. That's not how it works. So I would like you to just stay focused on the law and not on what the media is telling. Like you can turn off the media, turn off CNN, turn off all those network news shows, turn off all the cable news shows, stop reading the Washington Post, the New York Times, stop reading that tripe, pay attention to the independent media that's reporting facts because there's a lot of us out here now reporting facts, relying on the rule of law and keeping each other in check. That's what it's about. That's what the media is about. Why is it that Tom Fitton has to do the work of the FBI? Why is it that Project Veritas has to do the work of the FBI? Why can't our government agencies do this? This is asinine that we have private citizens that, that are doing the investigative work that our investigative agencies should be doing. They are part of the deep state and they need to be called. Again, if you're just tuning in, Tracy Bean, senior editor at UncoverDC.com, lost her house in a fire today. And it is tragic that she lost her house. I hope that the fire was an accident and not a result of arson. Because if the left wants to keep this up, they have picked a fight with the wrong set of people. Because going all the way back to 1776, the patriots in this country will fight for what's right. And they will fight. So if the left wants to start it, let them start it. But they won't be the ones finishing it. This is Daniel Bobinski with the New Book of Daniel podcast. Thanks for listening. If you want to reach me for any reason, you can send an email to newbookofdaniel at outlook.com. newbookofdaniel at outlook.com. Follow me on the social media platforms. I'm getting more active on Parler and MeWe lately, less active on Twitter and Facebook. So find me on Parler and MeWe, simply doing a search for at New Book of Daniel. If you'd like to read my thoughts on politics and the issues of the day, you can do that at uncoverdc.com and Red State. Thank you for listening. Until the next time, be blessed. <laughs>